Welcome everybody to today's video. Today's video is going to be about the differences between slow weight gain and failure to thrive. Now, slow weight gain is not life-threatening, whereas failure to thrive would be more in that life-threatening, scary type of scenario. It is important when your baby is gaining slowly to make sure that it's just um, a slow weight gain versus a failure to thrive. And there's very distinct change, uh, differences. So these are the things you should see or that you will see if it's a slow weight gain. You're going to see that they're, they frequently feed. Um, they actively suck and swallow at the breast. Uh, the mother experiences uh, regular letdowns. Um, the urine is pale. They go through five to six or more diapers daily. Um, their stool is seedy or soft. Also that the infant is going to be very alert and active. Appropriate developmental milestones met. So they're meeting their milestones. Weight gain is consistent and continuous, although it's lower than average. So I had a baby, just as an example, that was on this slow weight gain. And the doctor said that the baby was failing to thrive. And because the mom had had some experience with um, a previous baby that did have failure to thrive, she was concerned. So typically we see we want the baby to gain a half an ounce to an ounce um, a day. That at some point begins to slow down, but that's typical of what we're looking for, a half an ounce to an ounce a day. And her baby came in and the baby was below a half ounce a day. So I believe it was like 0.33 ounces a day. But he was gaining that 0.33 ounces every day. So although he wasn't meeting what we would say is normal, what we want to see, which is the half an ounce to an ounce, he was below that. He was still consistently gaining that same amount. He wasn't losing. He wasn't staying the same. And so that's what it means when you, we talk about their, their um, weight gain is consistent. Those are nine things that you're looking for to, to show the difference between slow weight gain. So that is slow weight gain, a baby that's just suffering from slow weight gain, not a failure to thrive. These uh, points are babies who are failing to thrive. And I'm going to read the first seven are for babies younger than one month. And then, or is that seven? Four, yeah, seven. And then the last eight are babies who are um, older than one month. So a baby that is failing to thrive, these are the signs that they will show. They're, that they're still losing weight after that first week of birth, uh, since birth, okay? Um, instead of gaining weight, they're still losing. They're not even staying the same, they're still losing. Um, an infant does not reg regain birth weight by two weeks. So if your baby has not reached that their birth weight by two weeks old, that's usually a sign of failure to thrive. Weight loss greater than 10% of birth weight, uh, little or no growth in length or head circumference, um, evidence of malnutrition or dehydration, which can be a grayish pallor, uh, lethargic, loss of fat under the skin, um, strong urine, um, inadequate stools. Those are all evidence of malnutrition. Weight is below the 10th percentile at one month and the refusal to feed from birth. So from birth, they've struggled with feeding. Sometimes this failure to thrive, it's caused by things like infection or anatomical abnormality, sometimes in the mouth, like a, a cleft palate, or um, sometimes the maybe it's tongue tie or just some type of... Um, abnormality in the mouth, heart defects, malabsorption, malabsor gastrointestinal, endocrinological, chronic diseases, um, or it could be something as simple as breastfeeding mismanagement. So just not knowing exactly, you know, maybe you're just, maybe you were changing sides too quickly. Uh, maybe you were, the baby wasn't latched correctly. So some of those cases can be caused by breastfeeding mismanagement. I feel like the breastfeeding uh, mismanagement is something that you can kind of rule out right away. The same with anatomical abnormalities. A lot of times you can rule those out pretty quickly. 
Uh, but some of the other things may take a little bit longer, like gastrointestinal or chronic diseases or endocrinological things. Although some chronic diseases a lot of times show up early on. Um, so again, that's those are can be some reasons that you would find that a baby would have failure to thrive. Um, now in a baby older than one month, their weight would be below the third percentile. Um, they would have a drop in the rate of growth of length and, and head circumference. The infant would fall two standard deviations on the growth chart. And then um, you would again see evidence of malnutrition, whether it be um, lethargic, being lethargic, um, their soft spot could be sunken in, um, the skin color can be a grayish color, inadequate stools. If it does not meet their developmental milestone, infrequent or ineffective feeds, so they're not feeding well and they're not feeding often enough. And mother experiences few letdowns and erratic or non-existent weight gain. One thing that is important is that you understand that sometimes it might not be every single one of these things on the list. It could just be a couple of them that show that your baby is showing signs of. So your baby may not show signs of every single one of these, but a lot of them. They're showing signs of a lot of them. Um, even if they had a few of the failure to thrive, we would be concerned because we really don't want to see too much of symptoms of failure to thrive. Just one sign of failure to thrive, you're going to want to make sure that you didn't miss any other signs of failure to thrive because you really want to rule that out. Before you say, okay, it's just slow weight gain, you really want to rule out failure to thrive. If your doctor is telling you that your baby is not doing well and they are showing failure to thrive, but they're not showing any of these signs of failure to thrive. They're just showing signs of slow weight gain. Again, go see a lactation specialist to just make sure that there's nothing on here. That Because a lot of times there's some things that we can do to rule out failure to thrive. But if you feel your baby is failing to thrive and nobody is listening to you. Say you're going to an IBCLC and they're telling you, no, no, it's just slow weight gain. But you look at this list and you're like, no, this is, my baby has these things. Go with your gut because if your gut tells you your baby is not thriving, then you want to make sure that you do what you have to do to make sure your baby is well. Um, it's always okay to get a second opinion from an IBCLC, a, lact a certified lactation counselor, from a peer counselor, from anyone who's talking to you about breastfeeding. If you just aren't sure you tr uh, you're, that you really feel confident in what they're saying to you, go talk to somebody else. So that is it for t this video today. I hope that it can kind of help you know the difference between the two and what to look for. And if you have any questions, know where to turn. Always feel free to leave any questions or concerns for me in the uh, description below. You should be able to check out, I should have an email that you can email me at if you um, have any other questions. So feel free to contact me if you need to. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so that you can be notified when I do put up videos. And I will see you guys in my next video.